Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill. Now previously on a video I took a look at um, some 1940s components that I'd recovered from a, a scrap uh, radio chassis and the component in question was a, an IF transformer and I wanted at the time to include um, uh, another IF transformer from a, a radio that was a little bit older but uh, that video was getting a bit long so I've split it in half and this really I guess is part two and the two radios in question were a, a 1949 model by Echo and a 1947-48 model by Pi and although they were only about a year apart in terms of manufacturing date um, the technology used in them was probably uh, 10 years different the equipment in the Echo was relatively recent it was late 40s valves late 40s components whereas the the Pi radio was using components that were actually from the late 30s in some cases um, so I thought it might be interesting just to look at those because this is vanishing technology and uh, in these days of miniaturization and um, surface mount components and everything being digital this kind of thing eventually is you know uh, only going to exist in in the world of nostalgia maybe it does even now so let's start with a quick recap of the um, the late 40s radio uh, component and then have a look at the performance of the two side by side okay so in the first um, video I did uh, on this uh, IF transformer uh, this particular one is the one that we looked at we looked at it on the scope we also looked at it on the spectrum analyzer and this is from a an echo um, radio which uh, was EK Cole a British manufacturer and this radio was produced in um, 1949 and uh, quite compact and the radio itself also used uh, valves of this style this is a UBC 41 it's a, a double diode triode probably doesn't make much sense to if you don't do um, valve radios but essentially this was um, the triode was part of an audio amplifier and the double diode bit was part of the um, uh, AM demodulation and uh, sometimes also the uh, automatic gain control um, but these valves commonly followed the second IF transformer and um, if this doesn't sound too silly it looks like a, a sort of a modern valve um, or as modern as valves can be these this radio produced in 49 and these valves were also uh, first produced in 49 now I'll just show you those for for comparison's sake um, because um, also um, had some other scrap chassis components from another radio and this is a radio from uh, just a year earlier 1948 and this is from a Pi radio and this is the IF can and you can see it's quite a, a difference in size um, and interestingly we've got a wire coming out the top and again if you're not familiar with um, valve technology um, probably looks a bit baffling um, but this wire here uh, would have gone to the top of a valve something like this this is an EBC 33 and actually this is a valve from about I think it was 1938 off the top of my head might have been 39 so 10 years previously but essentially these valves do the same job they're both double diode triodes um, both incidentally still working fine um, over 70 years later and the um, one of the inputs to this valve was on this cap which is on the top and so um, in in use in the radio that would have clipped onto there uh, like that inside the set um, here's a picture of that taken from a, a different radio you can see the connection on top of the valve there and um, valve radios were point to point wiring and in these days of um, multi-layer printed circuit boards and surface mount components it's perhaps um, uh, a bit bizarre to look inside a valve amp and think gosh that looks a mess here's a photo from inside of an echo um, receiver uh, lots of waxy capacitors there now there has been some work done in this radio before um, I ever saw it uh, but um, as you can see it's a bit complicated so I wanted really to um, have a look at the characteristics of this valve on some uh, this transformer on some uh, modern equipment so that's what i want to do so i'm going to just um reset the um camera 
and get the spectrum analyzer fired up and uh, then we'll have a look at uh, what's going on. Okay the general arrangement for the testing then, um, this is the original coil you saw in a previous video so I've got input from the tracking generator being fed in on one side and I've got the uh, output to the spectrum analyzer coming off the other side and this little clip lead here is just to make sure the can is earthed because that does make a significant difference. Now let's look at the uh, spectrum analyzer. Okay I'm not going to spend too much time going through the setup. Um, got, I'm just looking right at the very top of the response curve here so I've got a span full screen span of 40 kilohertz and it's centered on 455 I've just picked that because that's a common IF frequency and I've centered it as best I can uh, using the um, top trimmer and the bottom trimmer I've got it to be as um, as high as I can possibly get it or, or as narrow if you like so I've just put a couple of uh, markers here um, and just looking at the delta in frequency between those two markers so I've got this at 1 dB per division at the moment so 3 dB down from the peak uh, we've got a skirt width of about 10.24 kilohertz so that's the um, skirt width of the uh, coil from the echo radio uh, the one that you saw the other day now I'm going to set it up for the um, to look at the red, the coil of, uh, which was of a slightly older design and see what results we get. Okay here's the older of the two coils in, that's the larger can um, taken from the, the 1948 uh, radio and span exactly the same, tracking generator the same, test arrangements are the same, I've just had to adjust the, uh, the position of the trace on the screen so you can actually see it and we've still got one dB per division vertically. Uh, I've positioned the two cursors as before and we've got a delta at 3 dB down, a skirt width of uh, about 5.7 kilohertz. So this is a much, um, if you like, uh, better response in terms of the, the shape of the curve, it's tighter. So what I'm now going to do is just uh, reset the display so you can see, um, hopefully see both curves so I'll just set that up and then I'll come back. Okay, so uh, just made one or two changes to the to the display. We're now on 3 dB per division, um, but the 40 kilohertz span is exactly the same. So the blue trace here is the trace from the uh, 1949 radio. That's uh, the smaller of the two cans. And the green trace is the 1947 um, radio with the, the larger can and as you can see uh, we have got well we know from the measurements that we've got about at minus 3 dB we've got just over 10 um, uh, kilohertz here and here we've got uh, just just under 6 kilohertz so we've clearly got something that would be uh, more selective um, so we've got 4 kilohertz per division going this way so if you think about uh, the spacing of an AM uh, transmission, um, by the time you've gone, say, I don't know, 12 kilohertz away, we are um, well down and you would definitely get, both radios would clearly respond okay, but it is interesting that the older of the two coils um, is considerably better. So let's... Um, Let's just have a look at the physical characteristics of these two um, two devices. Okay, so let's just have a look at the physical characteristics of these coils. And this is the one from the uh, younger of the two radios, the smaller coil. And I've just bent back these two little tabs here, so we should be able to uh, ease the coil out there. And there you can see it, plenty of wax been used. So essentially what we've got, are uh, that wire and that wire go to this uh, coil here so those pair of one side of the transformer and the two wires with a bit of insulation on here go up to the top coil and you can see the uh, the adjustment cores so it simply is um, uh, two coils arranged as a, as a transformer now here's the older of the two coils the larger one and again I've undone the 
uh, two bolts at the bottom. These are undoubtedly um, 4BA, British Association, what a fine thread system. Um, most of you in the rest of the world have probably never heard of that. Um, so let's take this out and as you can see we've still got the two coils, we've got these four bars that run up through which form the connections which allow us, certainly in the case of this one, allow us to solder another lead on if we want to go to the top of um, the next valve in the chain. But we've also got two capacitors. There we go, these two are 140 picofarad, plus or minus two percent, so I suspect that they're uh, they're mica capacitors. They're covered in wax and although they're um, uh, 70 years old, I suspect if I unsoldered one of those and tested it, it probably wouldn't be too far off. Um, I'm not going to do that, but uh, certainly um, that is the case. So, physical differences then obviously one's larger than the other, but it, just putting that way for you. But electrically, uh, we've effectively got uh, a transformer with two tank circuits here, so we've got a capacitor which is in parallel um, with the coil on each side. But uh, ordinarily you wouldn't see that because it would be contained with, within the can. So, um, is it the capacitor that's making this coil perform better? Or is it simply that um, it's a better design. Mm, don't know, I'm probably not smart enough to be able to answer that question properly, but one thing we can try is to solder a couple of capacitors across um, this can and uh, see what's what. Now, these capacitors uh, are shown on the circuit diagram of this radio, they're not, they're not actually, it doesn't actually give you a value, Just you just buy this particular can and clearly the designer knew what it contained. Whereas on this one, they were external capacitors. So I'm going to pick capacitors that um, are as close as I can get to, to that that the circuit diagram says, and so then we'll just have a look at the shape of the response curve when we've done that. Okay, this is the arrangement for testing with the additional capacitors. I've just soldered two 15 picofarad ceramics across the, the terminals there. Otherwise, um, the conditions are, are unchanged. Let's now have a look at the trace. Okay, so with a couple of uh, 15 picofarad capacitors across, as I've just shown you, um, this is the original trace of the larger of the two cans, and the blue is the original trace of the smaller can. Um, if I now add those two capacitors, let's now switch on uh, the current trace and uh, see what we get. And quite a difference there as you can see. Um, I've managed to get them all on the display with just on a 3db, 3db per division there but you can see quite a difference um, in the shape of those curves now. So yes it isn't quite as um, strong a response as the larger can but as you can see the skirt width is much narrower so it's much more selective so it looks like um, uh, capacitors were the key and indeed in the older of, sorry, the newer of the two radio circuits, uh, the capacitors were indeed fitted, but they were just external to the can, that was all. So, there we go. Um, they knew what they were doing over 70 years ago, and uh, that's a um, pretty impressive uh, response curve, really. Okay, well, to summarise then, um, obviously the way that a IF transformer um, responds in a circuit is a bit more than just to do with the characteristics of the transformer, it's to do with uh, the components that surround it, whether they be passive or active, I'm obviously aware of that. But it is interesting to see how these things respond. And yeah, it might have been 70, in some cases nearly 80 years ago, but uh, uh, they knew what they were doing back then, and they were getting uh, good results. Um, it might look very archaic if you're not to you now if you're not familiar with um, valve technology, but although it was much bigger and um, was obviously nowhere near as energy efficient, um, it was actually surprisingly good, and a lot of innovation was made using using valve technology. Or for those of you other side of the pond, tubes. Um, being British, I just keep calling them valves. Anyway, I hope that's been interesting um, and. Uh, it's got you thinking about um, 
the way circuits respond to, to different frequencies. And uh, if you've enjoyed it, there's lots of um, videos I've done with, which cover these topics, so it's perhaps worth having a look through at those. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, be great if you could click the thumbs up, and if you've not subscribed, subscribe. That really helps the channel, costs you nothing. If you're in the market for a multimeter or something like that, please have a look at the Kiwitz website. And if you use the code that you'll find in the description, uh, you'll get a discount and that also helps the channel. To those of you that have already done that, thank you very much. That's appreciated. Look forward to seeing you on the next video.